right. So I know everybody heard that. Now, Dr. Umar, since you have been talking about how we need to build things and we need to take action and versus just listening and soaking in information and use that information to actually make a change and get these inst institutions and these communities that we actually need instead of them being so spread out across the U.S. Like we actually need that one community where you can get everything that's black owned. I know you were um, building a school that everybody's been talking about. And also it has hit that, you know, everybody kind of was giving you a hard a hard problem about LeBron James building his school and trying to, I feel like they were kind of trying to throw you under the bus, but do you want to speak on that a little bit? Because I know for sure that you are still doing things to make things happen as far as inst institutions for the at risk, uh, the young and at risk and our community and everything like that. It's interesting you brought up the LeBron James situation because it seems like every time I go to Africa, some something happens big with me on social network. Every single year mm -hmm. I go to Africa, something pops off. So while we were traveling through Ethiopia, I started getting all these texts about the LeBron James supporters of mine were sending me the information that the haters were putting out there, the different memes, this and that. What I find interesting, and I support LeBron James, you know, in terms of his ability to speak about certain situations. I think he's clearly the greatest basketball player of all time. Mm -hmm. Off the court. Off the court. Oh, yeah, I was about to say, we might, we might have to say Jordan. But Omar. off the court, off the court, he's you can't even compare Michael Jordan to him. Michael Jordan never spoke up for black people. Right. Never. Kobe Bryant never spoke up for black people. Right. LeBron James did. So off the court, he is the goal in terms of speaking up. Could he do more? Hell yeah. But at the same time, I have learned to be patient with those who have their head directly inside of the mouth of the lion. Right. You know, when you're that close to the power structure as a LeBron James, a Jay-Z, I have to be thankful for the little bit that I do see them try to do. Mm -hmm. They can't make the moves that I make because their head is directly inside the mouth of the lion. That mm -hmm. doesn't right. mean that I hold them to a lower standard. Right. It simply means I recognize that they have to manipulate, operate, and maneuver in a different fashion. Now, I think one of the biggest myths about this whole LeBron James campaign is LeBron James did not open a school. That's the biggest myth of this. Only educators would know this, which is why right. Right. when you see detractors do what they do, they're clearly miseducated individuals. You cannot own a public school. You cannot open a public school. You cannot run a public school. The only entity that owns a public school is the state. Facts. Right. Now, when I first heard about it, I said, okay, LeBron opened up an independent school, or LeBron opened up a private school. But when I finally saw the information, and it's the African public school, I said, okay, this is not what people think it is. Right. It's no different than Jalen Rose's charter school in Detroit. It's no different than Puff Daddy's charter school in New York. Charter schools are public schools, and public schools are public schools. LeBron James did not open up a school. What LeBron James did was give money to the Akron public school system so that they could create an alternative school for children who are having issues, I believe, in the third and fourth or fourth and fifth grade. Okay? Now, if anyone thinks LeBron James owns that school, simply look at the teachers who are working in that school. The pictures are all over the Internet. And most of the teachers in that school are white women. No different than the same white women who've been miseducating black boys for generations. Right. Now, if LeBron James owned the school, do you really think he would hire mostly white women to run the school and white men? Nope. Why aren't there more black people than white people in that school? Because it's not his. You cannot right. open or, 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 or you can't open a public school. Public schools are owned by the what he did was he gave money, and what he did was he allowed them to use his name. Mm -hmm. That's right. it. Which is why you haven't really heard him speak much about it, because it's not his operation. Right. His money, his name, it's white people's operation. Right. So for me, 
people to compare me to that is absolutely ridiculous. Because what I'm trying to do is the total opposite. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get black children, black teachers, not white teachers. LeBron James is not changing the game. It's the same old story. And I'm not blaming him because it ain't his school. It's only his money and his name. Right. See? But, you know, with the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, we're trying to change the way black children think. We're trying to right. change the way that they see themselves. We're trying to change their ability to understand economics, politics, military science. The subjects that I'm teaching at FDMG, none of them will be taught at LeBron. And I don't even want to call it LeBron James' school because it's not. None of them will be taught by the Akron Public School that LeBron James is funding. None, none of my subjects will be taught in that school. But again, this is not me versus him because I respect the brother, right. obviously. There's no issues there. It just shows you how ignorant coons can be right. in their desire to try to make mockery of my work. You know, every LeBron school, LeBron school, LeBron James does not have a school. That is an Akron public school. Jalen Rose does not have a school. That is a Detroit charter school. Puffy Combs does not have a school. That is a Harlem charter school. Talk to me when one of these rich Negroes actually uses their money to build an independent school with black teachers out of their own money where they control the curriculum. They control the pedagogy. They control the instruction. And most of all, they hire the teachers. LeBron right. James didn't hire a single soul for that school. And if he did hire all those white women, well, guess what? I would have to reassess the respect that I have for him. But it's not his school. It's just his money. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to definitely clear that up because right. when I read the headlines, I definitely knew that what was being said and the, the backlash that was coming with it did not add up. And if you are conscious of everything that's going on in our community, then you definitely know that it's more to the story. So I definitely want to get your side on that. Because I know for a fact that you are doing exactly what you said you're going to do as far as your school and the difference between that and LeBron James. So it was very important for me to get that out there for everybody to know that. And the other thing I want to say, for the sake of clarity with, with the school project, what I found so interesting about the hate campaign, and let's be clear why there is a hate campaign. Let, let, let me just give a quick history. Uh, the school fundraiser began in the spring of 2014. 2014. So we're 15, 16, 17, 18. We're four years into raising the fund. Right. The hate campaign did not start when the school pa- campaign began. The hate campaign began a year later in 2015. And there were two major situations that arose that gave birth to the hate. Number one, the hate campaign coincided with the decision that I made to start hosting and sponsoring my own lecture events. Now, I still allow individuals to invite me out to speak. But in 2015, for the first time, I started sponsoring my own lectures. I did that because when other individuals would invite me out, they were being very disrespectful with the way in which they managed the event. And one of the biggest things I had an issue with is that they would make people who paid to come out to see me wait hours and hours and hours before they actually got to hear me. So basically, they had to sit there for three or four hours through all of these opening acts, all of these opening speakers, all of these opening performances and announcements. And then they get Dr. Umar Johnson at the end of the night, at the end of the night, not the middle of the night, but the end of the night. And then when I get up on stage, I'm being told that I only have 20, 30, 40 minutes to speak because they ran past time. That is very disrespectful to the audience. That is very disrespectful to me. To bring them out there, make them pay to hear Dr. Umar Johnson, and then the man they came to hear, they barely get to even hear him because you waited all night to bring him on the stage. And then it's disrespectful to me and my message because I traveled to come here. And yet, and still, you're going to cut my time when you let all of these irrelevant, erroneous people come up here and spew whatever they wanted to speak to the audience when the audience did not come to hear them. They came to hear me. And that happened so many times. So many times I was frustrated going home. Like, I came down there and people paid to come and see me and they didn't even get a chance to really hear me talk. And that frustration led me to cut out the middleman. Right. start doing my own events. But when I did that, that upset a lot of hustlers in the conscious community. 
because they were no longer able to make a dollar off a doctor.